Isn't it a great song? I know, right? It's amazing. It's enough of that. All right. How's it going, everybody? So, got something planned. We're going to talk about some stuff. First, we're going to talk about Quaithe. And then we're going to talk about some other books. And it's going to be fun. And then at the end, there's going to be a Q&A. And it's going to be awesome. All right. So, Quaith is a character in A Song of Ice and Fire. First shows up in A Clash of Kings, and she's quite mysterious. She's very shrouded in mystery. We don't really know what her real intentions are or why she's doing the things that she's doing. And that's what makes the character so fascinating. All right, so Quaith comes, she first shows up in A Clash of Kings, and it's when Daenerys is at Vais Teloro, which is like the city that she finds out in the middle of the Red Waste somewhere. And basically Quaith and some other people from Karth come out and they find Daenerys at that city. Is it lagging? I don't know if it's lagging or not. Why do I always seem to have problems during live streams? I'm just going to keep talking. Anyways, she finds her at Vez Toloro, and after the other people leave, Quaith stays behind, and she says to Daenerys, They shall come day and night to see the wonder born again into the world, and when they see, they shall lust, for dragons are fire made flesh, and fire is power. Now, in the show, she actually tells Jorah this, not Danny. And also in the show, Danny's dragons get taken. That does not happen in the books, in case you haven't read the books. Danny's dragons never get taken in the books. And in the show, they do, and Quaith tells Jorah that the person that has Danny's dragons are with her now. So, who is Quaith? Quaith is a Shadowbinder, so that has to mean that she's from a Shy. Uh, the only other person in the series that is a Shadowbinder is Melisandre. I'm trying to read the comments at the same time, and I'm trying to talk, so I'm not used to this. I'm not used to reading comments and talking at the same time, I guess. I think you're saying, I think. What's going on is that the chat is a little bit behind me, and when I stopped talking for a second there, people thought that it meant no sound, but it's really not no sound. It was just me pausing to figure out if there was some kind of problem. Now, but what makes... We don't know if uh, Quaith... How different Quaith is from Melisandre. How are their powers different? Uh, Melisandre is a shadowbinder, but she's also a priest of R'hllor. So... We don't know if Quaith necessarily can do everything that Melisandre does, but there is some way that Quaith is predicting the future. But you got to think, is she really predicting the future? Uh, she seems to have dragon glass, and if you got dragon glass, that means you can kind of see um, more than the average person can see. You can enter people's dreams, and you can communicate across very long distances. So maybe Quaith just is a part of some greater conspiracy that's like keeping an eye on everything and that's how Quaith knows stuff. She doesn't necessarily have to be predicting the future. She could just see that, you know, a mummer's dragon is coming or that Daenerys should be aware of certain people because she's um, dealing with people that are scheming against her. Uh, Quaith is a very interesting character. Uh, in a Dance with Dragons scene, she comes to Daenerys while Daenerys is bathing on the top of a pyramid. And she says to Daenerys, basically what she says is that the glass candles are burning. Soon comes the pale mare, and after that the others. Kraken and the dark flame, lion and griffin, the sun's son, the mummer's dragon. Trust none of them. Remember the undying. Beware the perfumed seneschal. 
basically what she's saying to Daenerys is that you're causing a huge store a huge stir and you're making a lot of enemies don't get too comfortable remember what the undying ones told you the undying ones told her that the crones would bow before her beneath the mother of mountains they told her that she'd be betrayed three times uh, don't be too trustful of these strangers in a foreign land that you know nothing about and you totally upset their culture and change their way of life that they've been living for thousands of years all right and then right at the end of a dance of dragons quaith also she visits danny again uh in the sky and she says to daenerys again remember who you are daenerys the dragons know do you you've got stuff to do and you know the thing is quaith always seems to show up when danny is like kind of quest questioning her purpose because she's kind of like you know sh i should stay in marine you know westeros can wait i need to stay in marine and solve these problems that i created and do all this and then quaith shows up and she's like no don't get comfortable here you've got other stuff to do and then the same thing at the end daenerys is walking back to marine and quaith kind of shows up in the sky and she says no you've got other stuff to do forget marine uh you've got to do what you got to do got to do what you got to do remember who you are the dragons know do you uh yeah quaith is a very interesting character a lot of people have a lot of different ideas about who she is actually uh, some people think Melisandre, um, which I don't necessarily think it's Melisandre because based on Melisandre's POV chapter in A Dance of Dragons, Melisandre is not sure about everything either. Melisandre is confused about a lot of things, um, and she seems to pretty much think that Stannis is Azor Ahai. She doesn't even really know about Daenerys. I mean, she she's never thought about her. I mean, it seems like if Daenerys was a crucial point, a crucial part of her plan or whatever she's doing, that in that POV chapter that it would have maybe come up once. So I don't see it as uh, Melisandre. I don't think it could be Melisandre. But there are other there are other candidates like um, there are other candidates like Ashara Dane. People think that it could be Ashara Dane, which is another possibility. I don't know. I don't know. I think that. I don't know if it's gonna be somebody that we've heard of before in the show they kind of she just kind of shows up and then they never bring her up again and never mention her again and she's just kind of like why was she even in the show if they were never gonna bring her up again never gonna bring it up again so it's kind of weird um so what are Quay's motivations what is she doing is she really trying to help Daenerys or she is she out for her own gain does she is she doing the things why is she doing the things that she's doing is she trying to subtly destroy daenerys or does she really has does she really have daenerys's best intentions in mind not does she really have da daenerys's well-being in mind is what i mean or is she just helping daenerys because it suits what she needs she's very mysterious you don't know why she's doing what she's doing and that's what really makes quaith so interesting because she always shows up to warn Daenerys and to tell Daenerys that, hey, you need to watch your back. Hey, you need to kind of move it on, move along. She's kind of like the inspirational force that shows up. When Dan when Danny is down and about, then comes Quaith to give kind of like an inspirational speech. I don't know if you can call it inspirational because it seems to annoy Daenerys more than anything. She's like, I don't understand you. Why don't you just speak plainly? Like, because try, because prophecy is, you know, a double-edged sword. It's like, you don't know how things are necessarily going to play out. You know, it's, it's, it's almost like it's intentionally meant to confuse you. And Daenerys sees that and she's like, I don't know if I trust her or what. Because, be honest, if, like, some random woman just appeared to you and then disappeared uh, and, and told you a bunch of cryptic messages, would you know exactly what to think of that? I don't think you would. And then, yeah, so yeah, why, why, Daenerys doesn't really have any good reason to trust Quaith. She doesn't at all. Like, who Like who are you? You won't tell me what you're here for. You won't tell me what you're doing. You're speaking cryptically, you know. What do you want me to do? And then on top of that, Danny doesn't know whether or not she's going crazy. Because she often thinks, "What it, I don't want to be like my father, but then I think she also sees in herself, maybe I am 
like my father because the Mad King, before he died, he was nuts. So she's like, maybe I'm mad. You know, they say flip a coin and a Targaryen goes mad. Maybe I'm mad because was Viserys mad? Maybe. It seemed more. It seemed like he was less mad and more extremely, you know, prideful. And when his pride was just crushed, when the last of his ego was finally shattered, he lashed out at Daenerys. Like he lashed out at the one person that he was able to control for so long, finally breaking free from his control. So he lashed out. But that, does that make him necessarily mad? No, not really. So could Daenerys be mad? I mean, it's a possibility. Definitely a possibility. Okay, so that's Quaith. Brilliant character. Uh, George R. R. Martin really knows how to write a character. That's why um, his books are so compelling. Now, moving on to another fantasy series, one that I'm recommending to all of you guys is The King Killer Chronicles. Now, The King Killer Chronicles, this was supposed to be all set up, but whatever. The King Killer Chronicles is a fantasy series by Patrick Rothfuss, following the story of young arcanist in training, Kvoth. And an arcanist is basically a wizard slash scientist. Uh, in the beginning, Kvoth is 11, and he's part of a traveling theater troupe with his parents. And everyone in the troupe is really close, they're like family. One day, Kvoth and his troop, they're at this town, and Kvoth sees a man named Aventhi use magic, and this guy calls the name of the wind. He can basically control the wind, and this guy eventually joins the troop. He begins teaching Kvoth the basics of magic, and he's shocked at how fast Kvoth picks up, you know, these skills. Kvoth is special, and Aventhi sees that, but eventually Aventhi has to leave he receives an offer that he cannot refuse so he has to leave the troop now Kavot's father has been collecting stories about a legend about something called the chandrian which is this group of entities that would come and spread dread wherever they went um, and he's writing a song about them he's been working on it for like two years which is way longer than it usually takes him to write songs one day Kavot's troop gets attacked and slaughtered by the Chandrian and the legend is real uh, and Kvothe is the only survivor and he's totally traumatized by it he ends up living on the streets of the city called Tabian which is an awful city just think of it as basically King's Landing it's King's Landing that's how awful it is and basically he has to learn how to defend himself he has to learn how to feed himself he has to become a thief to survive he lives in this freaking terrible city for three years reading it because i read this after a song of ice and fire i definitely got vibes of like kind of aria like surviving on her own yeah so he has to survive in this huge city and he has to steal and you know it's cutthroat in this freaking city like he has to watch his back every single day one day he hears a man tell a story about the chandrian and it brings back all those suppressed memories about when the Chandrian killed his parents and killed his troop and he's thinking oh my god the Chandrian are real what I saw was real and then he's like I've got to know more about this I've got to get revenge against the Chandrian so at this point he's been living in the city for three years and Kvothe sells his last he's now 15 and he sells his last possession the last thing of value that he has the book that Abanthi the arcanist that taught him the basics of magic gave him and he gets himself some new clothes and his because his old clothes are basically just rags at this point he travels up to the university he gets in he's learning the skills of an arcanist he's trying to unravel the mystery of the chandrian and all the while making tons of enemies and barely escaping death multiple times and also growing up and dealing with a lot of things that go with being a teenager now an interesting thing about the king killer chronicles is that it's actually told from the point of view of Quivoth when he's older. Uh, this guy called Chronicler hunts him down and he's gone into hiding at this point. And he asks him to tell the story and basically the book is him telling his story to Chronicler. Now, what I really like about this series is how complex the magic is. It's not like Harry Potter where you just say some magic words and something happens although there is quote unquote magic words it takes months and even years just to learn the basics 
Uh, the magic in this series is more like science than magic. I highly recommend uh, the series because it's extremely compelling, and it is an unfinished series. So be warned, we have been waiting for the next novel in this series since 2011. The same amount of time that we've been waiting on the winds of winter. So that's why I'm like, people, why are you criticizing George R. R. Martin? It takes a while to write good things. Like it takes time. Like both, the, like the winds of winter and um, the next book in this series. We've been waiting on both of those books for the same amount of freak time. It's not easy to write this stuff. People, give these guys a break. Give them a break. All right. Now, the last thing I want to do before we get to Q&A is I'm going to talk about another book. <laughs> I'm going to talk about another book, and then we're going to get to Q&A, and you guys can ask me your questions, ask me about anything, Song of Ice and Fire, whatever you want. Now, God, Emperor of Dune. <laughs> More Dune. I'm sorry. I, I love Dune. I love Dune. Sorry if you don't love Dune, but we got to... We got to do it. So Paul, Paul Atreides, who was the Lizon al Gaib of Dune. I know this is going to get crazy and complicated. Just bear with me. He has twins, Leto and Ganema. Both of them are pre-born. And basically pre-born, pre-born children are born with all the freaking memories of their ancestors. Like, and it's crazy because they usually go nuts. And the only other pre-born in the story is Aaliyah, who is Paul's younger sister. And Aaliyah does go nuts. She gets possessed by one of the ancestors of her... By, she gets possessed by the genetic memory of her grandfather, who was the evil Baron Harkonnen. And basically, Aaliyah goes nuts and gets replaced. Leto, who is a little boy at this time, and he has a, his sister, Ganema. They're both kids, but not kids at the same time because they have all this knowledge from all their genetic memory. Leto realizes that the only way to save humanity and to stop humans from going extinct is to merge with sand trout and slowly transform into a sandworm over thousands of years while ruling over the entire universe with an iron fist. He bans travel between planets for most citizens in the universe. He severely limits the flow of spice in the universe. And if you don't know, spice is crucial to space travel. People throughout the universe are addicted to spice. It extends their lives. The Bene Gesserit Sisterhood, which I did a video on, uh, uses spice to heighten the awareness. It's the most valuable and coveted commodity resource in the entire universe. All right. But in exchange for all this, Leto gives them peace. All right. There's no war. There's no famine. But there is also stagnation. Like, through prescience, Leto foresaw several threats that faced the human species. One was Kralazak, which is basically the end of the Great War at the end of the universe. Uh, they, he saw that the Imperium's dependency on spice and the superhuman tasks performed by specialized groups such as the Spacing Guild and the Mintats, which are basically human computers, and the Bene Gesserit were a threat to human evolution. Also, because spice was only on Arrakis, like, human development was constrained to that one planet, you know? Leto interprets this lack of exploration and growth as stagnation and eventual... He, he interprets it as an eventual threat to the survival of humanity. And so, a much more imposing threat, as I mentioned before, was Kralazak, which is the mythic battle at the end of the universe, which was first directly described in God Emperor of Dune, but not fully revealed until later. All right. During his reign, all right... This is where it gets pretty cool. Leto took control of the Bene Gesserit Sisterhood's breeding plan. He used his sister Ganema to continue the Atreides line because he couldn't reproduce anymore because he's just like a giant worm dude. He doesn't have a penis, basically. And he breeds in a no gene, which gave the Atreides uh, the ability to be blocked from prescient vision. So no one could look into the future and see them anywhere. And he also made them faster, he made them stronger, their futures couldn't be predict predicted, they had enhanced speed, enhanced physical power, enhanced sharpness of mind, and then Leto was going to use them and the fish speakers to spread these genes throughout all of humanity, and that would prevent humanity from going extinct, because he'd make, humanities, he'd make humanity so much better, and he'd block them from being viewed by any other giant threat that could see the future like 
that could no longer be possible. So, God Emperor of Dune, like all the Dune books really, it are, is full of philosophy. It's about the dangers of religion mingled with government, because Leto is viewed as a god by many throughout the universe, and it's considered blasphemy not to, like, but that's part of Leto helping humanity. He's trying to say, look at what happens when you offer up your freedom so willingly to a dictator, to like this imperium. And um, it's certainly relevant to the times that we live on, if, if I do say so myself. So that's God Emperor of Dune, my recommend, another recommendation. Like you don't even really need to see the thing I love, love about the Dune books is that you don't even need to, you can read them out of order if you want. Like you, it won't be that bad if you read them out of order because God Emperor takes place 3,500 years in the future from the last book. So yeah, God Emperor of Dune, King Killer Chronicles, totally, totally. That's what you got to do. Got to do it. So now we're moving on to q and Going to look at the chat now. I might as well put it up on the screen. I have been glancing at the chat, but now I'm actually going to look at you and pay attention to you. Why is it a black screen? I guess this program doesn't want me to put the chat on the screen. But I am looking. I'll figure out how to get on the screen. You said it sounds like the worm from George R. R. Martin's sci-fi series. You mean in the house of the worm? Yep, exactly, pan fried. F it, we do it live. Quinn, are you going to do any more readings from Dune or It? I mean, potentially, if people want that sort of thing. I'm definitely not against it. Because It is definitely probably my favorite horror novel ever. And I love Dune as well, so... Dune Dune is rough. Dune is rough for a lot of people to get into because it's... it's there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on in Dune. It's not it's not something that you just jump into. What other Game of Thrones channels do you watch? I don't really watch any other Game of Thrones channels. To be honest, I don't. Because I don't want to ever be accused of stealing something from somebody. Because like I, I like if I watch the channel and then I pick up stuff that they've said and I repeat it, then I'm going to get trashed for being like, oh, you copied so-and-so and I just don't. That's not going to happen. Not doing it. It's Quaith trying to make Danny remember that she is not what we think she is. Maybe that maybe she is the sisters of the Mad King or something. She you you think she's one of the Mad King's sisters? I don't know exactly how that would work. I don't know. Quaith, Quaith, we don't know what Quaith is up to. Quaith is <laughs> That's that's the whole thing. Dune is long as F. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it's not so much that it's really long. I think A Song of Ice and Fire as a whole is longer, but Dune is just really dense. It's it's a lot to get through, and like you kind of if you if you're, you it's not the book that you don't pay attention to, and then you you can't just mingle by and think that and stuff and think that you're gonna get it because you're not gonna get it. Hey, dude, in your opinion. Whom does Quaith serve or ally with? I think there is a potential that she's allied with Marwyn. But I think if that's true, then her and Marwyn are a part of an even bigger conspiracy. Um, so, yeah. But as far as to the smaller details and intricacies, I mean, there's not a lot of information. Do you think prophecy is real or fake in A Song of Ice and Fire? I mean, prophecy... I think it's real. It's real as prophecy can be. Uh, there, are, there are, yeah. I think it's real. Is yeah, it's real, but it might not. It's not. I don't know how accurate it is. I mean, I kind of. It's kind of like Dune. It's like you can look into the future and you can see the general way things are probably going to turn out, but maybe not exactly. What What's something you want to occur in the winds of winter? I mean, want. I mean, I'm just, I'm just, I just, I, I try to not have desires about what I want to happen when I read books. I just kind of want the author to tell the story 
that they want to tell. Like my when I'm when I'm reading a book, it's, my desires don't really matter. It's more just like whatever you want to give me, the mind that's writing the story, just give me that. Uh, how many children do you think Tywin really has? I think Tyrion is his only true son. I think that is a distinct possibility. Yeah, I think it's more likely that Cersei and Jaime are the Mad King's son than it would be that Tyrion was the Mad King's son. But I don't necessarily buy that either of those are true. I think that most likely all of T Tywin's three children are his children. But it would be ironic if Tywin... The one that Tywin says, you're not my son, is actually not his son. I mean, is actually his only son. That That is that is some kind of irony. I've been waiting uh, waiting to see the King Killer Chronicles theory videos for a while. I'm a huge fan of the series. What do you like about the books? I mean, like I said, I like the way magic is described. Like the the details that go into something like sympathy for instance uh it's so detailed and then they have like different like they don't have weeks they have something called spans which consists of 11 days and like it's so the world is so real it's so realized uh it's like I, you don't even question it for a second it just seems like yeah this this is totally real this totally happened <laughs> so i love it i love how immersive it is it's just just brilliantly written Tyrion has a birth defect because he is the product of incest between cousins. So he is Tywin's only true-born son. But you know, people married cousins all the time back in the day in, in the Game of Thrones universe as well. So I don't know if that's necessarily, you know, a thing. Let me see if I can put the chat on the screen again. It didn't let me last time. It was like, no. Oh, there it is. The chat is on the screen. Everybody can see what people are typing. What do you equals J? Do you think R plus L, L <laughs> can't talk? R plus L equals J will happen in the books, or are you still leaning towards N plus A equals J for the books? Uh, the latter. I've met Patrick Rothfuss before. He is an awesome person. I'm sure he is. He definitely writes some awesome books. Would you rather control one dragon? Or be a six skin warg. I'd rather control one dragon. Like, one dragon? Of course, a dragon. Of course. Like, what is. Even if I can control six animals as a warg, one dragon is like. That's worth more than six animals. That's priceless. That's, that's the ultimate weapon. Hey, do you think the world of Ice and Fire is in the same universe as Martin's sci fi series? Sorry if someone already asked. I don't necessarily think so. I know that's an idea a lot, that a lot of people have. I'm not saying it's wrong. But I don't really think so. I think that A Song of Ice and Fire is really just his... It's his magnum opus. It's something different. It might, it might make allusions to his previous work. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's set in the same time. In the same universe. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something. Uh, whatever, I forgot. Do you, what do you think Quaithe will do in the Winds of Winter? I don't know what the frick Quaithe will do in the Winds of Winter. I don't know what's going on with her. Is Melisandre a Bene Jesuit? Are the prophecies theirs or someone else's? The Lord of Light, Bran, stay awesome. Is Mil... <laughs> I think Melisandre could totally be a Bene Jesuit. She reminds me of the Bene Jesuit from Dune. Certainly. Do you think Stannis will survive the Battle of Ice? I think so. What epic fantasy books would you recommend looking for the next series to start after Mistborn? Well, if you haven't read King Killer Chronicles, I definitely read that. There's also the Wheel of Time series, which is also freaking amazing. Like, you gotta read that. That's, like, standard. Uh, Tolkien's work is a little dry for my taste, but, you know... The world is so it's immersive and it's great but you know uh do you like house of valerian and do you agree that danny should marry valerian since she has lots since they have lots of tar blood 
House of Valerian. Not sure what house that is, actually. House Valerian. What is your opinions on the later Doom books, Heretics, and Chapter House? In my opinion, they are a convoluted mess. I mean, I thought it was interesting with the people from the Scattering coming back. It was a nice little mystery. I, I, will, I will say it's not as good as... It's not as good as Children of Dune, it's not as good as Dune, and it's not as good as God Emperor. But I feel like it might be on the same level. They might, they might be on the same level as maybe Dune Messiah. Like, Dune Messiah was probably my least favorite of the six Herbert books. So, yeah. Do you think Bloodraven could work a dragon? I don't think so. I think Bran has the potential to, because I think Bran is significantly more powerful than Bloodraven. Definitely. Hmm. Do you think Jamie will turn on Cersei? Wait. Do you think Jamie will turn of Cersei? Maybe join John? Oh, do I think he will turn on Cersei? I think so. Eventually. He's already kind of turned on Cersei in the book. He really has. He didn't go. When she called him asking for help, he didn't go to her. So that says something big. Do you think John and Cersei will marry? Uh, no, I don't think John and Cersei will marry. <laughs> That would be quite a twist. Uh, please, please read and analyze Malazan. What's that about? Unborn. What are you talking about, Charles Walden? What you talking about, Charles Walden? Do you think John is the key sets Hadarak? If anybody in A Song of Ice and Fire is the key sets Hadarak, it's Bran. If the Night King revives a dragon, do you think Bran will be able to warg it and seize control? Oh, sh crap, that's an interesting question. Would Bran be powerful enough to take a dragon that the Night King has killed and warg it? Interesting. I think a good test for Bran would be to see if he could warg one of the Whites. If Bran could warg into one of the Whites, you know, that would reveal something. It's interesting. It's interesting. I wonder if Bran could warg into the white, would he be part of the hive mind then? Would he sense the, the overarching goal of the whole, you know? Like, he, like let's say he'd warg into the, into the body of a white. And you know how they're hive minded, so he would sense the desire of the entire, entire entity. He'd sense everything at once, all the plans. That'd be interesting, I think. What plot threads in the Winds of Winter are you looking forward to most? Oh, God. Euron, I would definitely want to know what's going on with Euron Greyjoy. I want to I wanna know how Danny is going to get out of her situation with the Dothraki. Uh, I want to know what's going on with Jon, like, because he's just been, you know, stabbed to death. And obviously Bran. I mean, what am I not interested in? Like, that's why that's, that's, why that's such a hard question to ask. I'm interested in everything. I'm looking forward to all of it. <laughs> Marwyn, Sam at the Citadel... Like, Lady Stoneheart and what's going on with Brienne and Jamie. Like, oh my god, the list goes on and on and on. Ah, uh, yes, I've read The Gardens of the Moon. Fantastic book. Do you think you'll do King Killer Chronicle videos? Potentially. Potentially, because like I said, the books aren't finished. So, you know, there's always the potential for, like, you know making theories about it when they're not finished and then who knows maybe it'll, it'll get made into like a huge tv show and then people will come to my channel and be like yay videos on the king killer chronicles and i can be the first person up with king killer chronicle videos i don't know there's probably already people with king killer chronicle videos though i don't know i don't pay attention to stuff like that i really don't the ririra revelations and the sovereign of the seven isles are born are both great books. I can't read. You know, it's something about the scrolling chat that Fs with my eyes. So, like, I can't, like, throws me off. Throw me a bone here, dude. I don't have any bones, bro. Marwyn and Melisandre are enemies or allies or neither. I don't think they're either. I think they're just both two people with their own independent goals. I don't think either one, I don't think they're, you know, I don't think they're enemies, I don't think they're allies. 
going to put up a picture of Daenerys. Lionsgate bought the rights. Wait, Lionsgate bought the rights to King Killer Chronicles? Did they? That's interesting. Well, everything, well, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that anything's coming out of it anytime soon cuz like the rights are being bought to everything. Like like when Game of Thrones got popular, like all of the big fantasy series got the rights bought, you know, freaking Last Apprentice, uh The Wheel of Time got the rights bought, and then the Last Apprentice movie was freaking terrible, by the way. And then I don't know what they're going to do with The Wheel of Time. The rights to Dune have been bought apparently. Ugh. And then the last thing they tried to do with The Wheel of Time was awful. It was like this little pilot and they were going to make it into like a show or something. And it was on like FX or something. Oh my god, it was awful. It was just, it was literally terrible. It was terrible. I'm like, why did they do this? God. God, I hated it. I fucking hated it. Legendary purchased the rights of Dune. Well, that's interesting. They should make it into a TV show. They should definitely make it into a TV show and not try to do a movie because, you know, the miniseries, the Dune miniseries, like Dune is pretty decent. And then the Children of Dune one is pre is actually pretty good. I like the Children of the Dune. The visual effects just don't hold up like at all. So it does need to be remade with like HBO or something. Somebody that has a lot of money that can put into a TV show or somebody or something like that. Yeah, I definitely agree. Dune is complex. People must trade. Tread lightly. Tread lightly when it comes to Dune. It's not an easy read at all. Not even a little bit. What? Think my stream just paused for a second, but it came back. What did you What did you think the likelihood that that young Griff is actually a Targaryen? I personally think he is a Blackfire from the female line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably what he is. I think that um, Illyrio Mopapis, his love with golden hair, I think that she was probably a black fire, and that's who young Griff is. He's Illyrio's son. Definitely. David Lynch one was way before its time. See, I, I can watch the David Lynch one. Like, the first, like, hour of that movie is pretty... It's pretty good. But then after that, it... It, it's just it just feels so rushed and it's just not like you just don't you there's no way you can understand what's going on if you haven't read the book you're just like what what what's what's going on like you you, you don't get it you don't get it but you know the first hour or so it's probably the best and then after that it's just like uh, I don't know don't know yeah Dune is certainly not easy to interpret on the screen not easy so like you have to like and people talk about the Yodorowsky version and they say it would have been so amazing I've seen Yodorowsky's Dune and you know the, the stuff that he was talking about doing that's not Dune I get that some people I, I get that Yodorowsky has a lot of really loyal followers but you know come on that's not Dune that's not Dune come on that would have been a mess like that's just my honest opinion. I know people really, really want the Yodorowsky Dune thing to happen, but no, 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 no. It it would have it would have been silly. It would have been weird. It would have flopped horribly. I mean, it in, you know, I'm sure it would have been artsy and incredible and directed great, and the cinematography cinematography would have been fine. But as far as it being an interpretation of Dune, I think it would have been way too far off. That's that would not have been what. Uh, Frank Herbert envisioned or wanted, I don't think. David Lynch was rushed because a lot it's a lot of information. The miniseries is great because you have multiple people explaining things. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Could Young Griff have been the Tower of Joy Baby? His hair is colored blue and the only other character that had anything to do with blue was Lyanna Stark. Huh. That's a good that's a good idea. I've never actually considered that. But yeah, that's interesting. Cuz you know, you you assume that his hair is just dye blue to hide the fact that he is that he's got, you know, silver hair because he's because of that Targaryen blood, but maybe it's also a reference to Lyanna. I hadn't thought about that. You're a genius.
If you like King Killer Chronicles and haven't read The Gentleman's Bastards, I highly recommend it. Well, thank, thanks for the recommendation. Thanks for the recommendation. Thanks for the recommendation. You know... Do you think Summer really mistook Smoke for a dragon? He bared his teeth at it in fear. No, no, I, I think that Summer definitely saw a dragon when the tower burned. I think he definitely saw a dragon. He's not gonna, yeah, that's the point. He's not gonna growl at freaking Smoke. He knows what Smoke looks like. Summer's not that, Summer's not that, you know, dumb to growl at Smoke. He's been around Smoke before. He knows what Smoke looks like, but another beast, another animal? Why would he growl at it if it wasn't something? If it wasn't something, something came out of that freaking tower. Do you think Mance Raider is really Sir Arthur Dane? I don't think so. Why did, everyone seems to think that Mance Raider is somebody in disguise. But I don't I don't think so. I think Mance Raider is Mance Raider. Not trying to kill your dreams, but the young Griff being Tower of Joy Baby, I don't know, kiddo. Yeah, like I said, I don't know. It's an interesting idea. It's an interesting idea. Like, lots of things are interesting ideas. Yeah, I saw the It trailer. It sucked. I saw the It trailer. It sucked. I mean, It... I mean, like I've said, it's one, It's probably Stephen King's best book. And it's about so much more than a freaking spooky clown going, I got blah, 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 blah. I'm scary, blah, 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 blah. It's about so much more than that. And they're never going to do it because people don't get cosmic horror. And, you know, they just want, you know, a clown that jumps out at you and screams and is all creepy and evil. Like, like what? Like, honestly, what the hell? Like, the clown in the beginning... The reason Georgie doesn't run away in the book when he sees the clown in the drain is because the clown looks like freaking Bobo the Clown. He doesn't look like an intimidating clown. Like, the clown pops up out of the drain in the new trailer, and it looks like a freaking demon. Like, what kid it, it would take off from that immediately? Like, they're, like you're not going to talk to that thing. No, who's going to talk to that thing? You're going to run. <laughs> no kid wouldn't run from that. So that's why I'm just like... Uh, they're just, they're making it about the scary clown again, but then again, it could have just been the trailer because you know sometimes, just look at the trailer for the Babadook, look at the trailer for the Witch. Both of those trailers, both of those horror movies are exquisite, but they were marketed as something that they're not. So I, I I'll give it a chance, but as for the look of the clown, ugh, I just, nah, nah, he doesn't he doesn't look good. I don't like the way he looks. So that's my that's my main complaint. I don't like the way it looks. The trailer was meh for me. It didn't really hit all the beats that I wanted it to hit because the town has a history. The town has a history that the book goes into, like a history of just cruelty and just violence and just horrible, horrible things happening in this town that n the information of it never spreads past the town. And, you know, it, it, it all gets forgotten and covered up by the town because nobody talks about it because it, it has possessed this town it has a grip on this town it built this town in its image and that's what's so freaking horrifying is that it's just it's not just a clown it's the entire town it's crazy it's nuts love that freaking book mance was a brother of the night's watch another brother could have learned him the dornish songs since brothers come from whole westeros not sure what you're saying what do you think about a Game of Thrones spinoff? I know it's happening. I know it's happening. I'm not necessarily against it. Because um, David and Dan would not be on it. So that's a thing. But then again, we, it could get replaced. They, they'd they get replaced with maybe people that are even less loyal. And even less um, careful with the source material. Even more careless people. So we don't know. I mean, it could... It, it, it could either get put into the hands of somebody that loves the series and wants to, you know, tell an accurate representation of, you know, the story and stay true to the actual world 
and the th- and the type of things that happen in this world, or it could be someone that doesn't really care and just it's just trying to do their own thing and just and they could ruin it, or they could make a good show, but it just wouldn't be anything to do with a song of ice and fire. Who knows? It could be good, might not be, probably won't be, because these types of things never are. To be honest. The costume for the new Pennywise is freaking hilarious. I agree. I agree. It look it looks it's dumb. Will, will you be watching the American Gods TV series? I haven't I haven't read the book, but I have um been hearing about the TV series. Maybe I should give it a try because it has been rec- recommended to me more than once. Oh, you read it? Thank. Well, you should have. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Okay, if Mansraider is really from the north of the wall, how was he able to get to Winterfell and know all the places to go beyond the wall and come back over the wall without getting lost or confused? I mean, I don't know. Well, Mance is a clever person. He's a clever dude, and we don't know how many. I mean,. That's a good question. I mean, I, I don't have all the answers. <laughs> I don't have all the answers. But I don't know. He could be. I mean, I, I just feel like in this series, people have a tendency to say everybody is somebody else. Nobody is who they are or who they appear to be. And I just don't think that's true. Everybody doesn't have to have a secret identity. That's all I'm saying. But he could be. Uh, Mansweirder could be Rhaegar Targaryen, like some people think, which I think it's just kind of ridiculous and super far-fetched, but... You know, some people think that. I mean, it's a possibility. Yeah, correct. That's true. Mance's, t- Mance's time as a part of the Night's Watch. He has been south of the wall, at least. True. Mance grew up at Castle Black. Who will inherit the Dread Fort? Um, Ramsay. <laughs> Uh, like, well, after you mean, or do you mean after Ramsay is dead? I mean, I, that whoever, whoever is ruling the North says will. Um, I hope in the books that Sansa becomes the Queen of the North because in the show I feel like they just gave it to John because that's just for some reason. But Sansa is the rightful ruler of the North, no matter what anybody says. But as far as who will inherit the Dreadfort after Ramsay dies, and obviously, I mean after Roose dies, and obviously Ramsay because. We know that Ramsey's going to kill that baby. We know that he's going to kill the baby. He killed the baby in the show, and I'm pretty sure it's going to happen in the book, too. Will Danny die? Not until the very end. Not until the very end, if at all. What do you think Kinvara's role will be in season 7 and 8? I don't know. I kind of get... I, you want to know my honest opinion? I don't even trust the show anymore. I kind of feel like they just kind of put her in because they just like a new... Melisandre, Melisandre 2.0. That's that's what I feel like happened. It's like Melisandre on the other side of the world. We want we want to insert Melisandre where we can't put Melisandre. We want Melisandre to be in two places at once. That's basically why Kinvara exists. That's what that's what I think. Sansa's a silly bee like her mom. I mean, she was raised the way she was raised. What what can you do? Um, Bran, wouldn't he be the rightful ruler of the North? I don't think Bran will ever rule the North. I don't think Bran... I I mean, Bran, yeah, Bran would be the rightful ruler of the North. He would. But I don't think he'll ever rule the North. Bran is the last green seer. He has other duties. What do you think the bittersweet ending will be? I think that all magic leaves the world... All the dragons die, the last of the children die, the last of the giants die, all traces of it are wiped from the world, and it becomes legend. It all becomes legend. That's the bittersweet ending. Um, They save humanity from the White Walkers, but at a price. Their civilization kind of gets shaken up. Their system falls. This whole feudal system collapses, and they suffer a lot. 
and from the ashes of this destroyed system, this destroyed kingdom, rises something new. And that's the bittersweet ending that I have in mind, that I hope to see. Because, you know, I think that's what George R. Martin is trying to say. Like, this system that they're living in is unsustainable, and it's not good, and it's totally oppressive to anybody that's not a noble-born. Do you actually think Rhaegar is still alive? The Ruby theory sounds valid. I don't think Rhaegar is still alive. Do you think the Faceless Men and the others are working together? No, I don't think the others are working with any humans. I don't think so. Do you think Jon's body will be burned so he won't be a white and resurrected like Danny? So he won't be a white. Oh, I get what you mean. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. But that's an interesting. I'm trying. I'm trying to think of a way that that might work. But I feel like the only reason that Danny survived that fire was because of Mary Mazdur's spell. It was the combination of Mary Mazdur's spell and King's blood, like Danny ended up performing a ritual without even knowing it. So I don't think that's the way it'll work for John, even if he's part Targaryen. It was it was a total miracle when that happened to Danny. Will John and Danny have sex? Well according to those leaks they will in season six, so I don't know. I hope George R. R. Martin does an alternate ending where the good POV characters live in happiness. <laughs> That'll totally happen. That'll definitely happen. Hmm. Do you think Rob legitimized John? Well, he did write the letter, didn't he? He wrote the letter to legitimize John, but I don't know. As far as the effect that that will have on future events, I mean, it's it's questionable. What do you think caused the doom of Valyria? Um, did you see my latest video on a shy? My latest video on Valyria and the Shadow People. I mean, it's interesting. I mean, there are a lot of possibilities. Uh, it could have been just that it was a natural disaster. That the White Walk... Not White Walkers, why did I just say that? That the 14 Flames just naturally exploded. It could have been sabotage, as some suggest. It could have been that the spells that were keeping everything in check faltered. And that they, you know, kind of F themselves. It could have been that they mined too deeply into the volcano and that they hit like something that kind of made the whole entire thing collapse. Or it could have been that the deity, Relore, like I suggested in my video, you know, came back on the loan that he loaned them and said, You got to pay me back now. I gave you all this power. Time to pay me back. And I'm claiming all these souls. But who knows? Do you think Arya will kill Sansa since Arya is becoming darker and darker since the ghost of High Heart sees evil in her? I think that is a possibility that Arya will kill Sansa. I do. I don't know if she will, but I, I see the distinct possibility. How do you think Danny would react in the show and in the books when someone tells her Rhaegar had another child, Jon, and he is the rightful king of Westeros? And not Danny. I don't know. I don't think Danny is gonna be like, no, I'm gonna rule. Because I don't really get the sense that Danny really wants to rule. I think Danny more than anything feel feels like she has to rule. What Danny wants is the house with the red door. She's been told like like Varys put it in her head that he was gonna be king and he was the last of this dynasty and that it was and, you know, this dynasty just had to freaking survive. And without him, it would die. And, like, how awful it would be if it died. And so she kind of grew up with those ideas. And now that, 
Viserys is gone, she's like, since he's gone, now I've got to save the dynasty. Even though she she doesn't necessarily have to really want it, she just feels like it's her duty that she has to. So I feel like if Jon Snow did step in and he was like, I'm the rightful heir, she, she, I think she would step down for him. I do. Who are better killers, the, face, the faceless men or the sorrowful men? I'd say the faceless men. I'd say the faceless men, definitely. Will Tyrion betray Danny? I know the TV series is much further ahead, but I think they do team up in the books too. I don't think Tyrion will betray Danny, no. I think that once Tyrion joins Danny's side that he's on her side. Do you think the Winds of Winter will be the best book in the series? I don't know. It depends on what's in it. <laughs> it depends on what's in it. George R. Martin said the gods in A Song of Ice and Fire aren't literal, but people's interpretation of magic. Well, I don't necessarily think the gods are literal either. Will Tyrion betray Danny? Oh, I already read that. Do you think the faceless men have contact? Have a contract out from Blood Raven? Interesting idea. Why? Why? Why do you think that? That's that's an interesting idea. I don't know. Why? Why would somebody want to kill Blood Raven? And who would have the money to do that? <laughs> And how would they know that he's still alive? I mean, and he's so old, you know, it's like he's about to die anyways. Basically, he doesn't he doesn't seem like he's got much longer. What's my favorite book so far? Um, I'd probably say it's like a tie between a feast for crows and a storm of swords. But I do really like I do really, really, really like a dance with dragons because it gets to like that's when I, I like to say A Dance of Dragons is when it goes, it tips the barrel and it becomes full on fantasy. There's so much magic in that book. I love it. Will we see Ishai in the show? Don't think, don't plan on it. I know Martin has already said that we won't see Ishai in the books. So don't plan on seeing it in the show either. Do you think that John will ever get to know of his parentage? Maybe he dies before he does. I mean, he's already dead in the book. You know, what if John isn't even dead in the book? What if he's just unconscious and that they save him and that there's no need for a resurrection? Wouldn't that throw everybody for a loop? There was like a whole big deal in the show with Melisandre bringing him back to life and stuff. What if in the book he's not even dead in the first place? That'd be interesting, wouldn't it? If A Song of Ice and Fire got a sequel or a post-series spinoff, where would you like like to see... A shy and a shadow beyond the sunset sea or Sathoros and Yultos. Oh, that's hard. That's hard. It's so freaking difficult. I want to say a shy, but I feel like beyond the sunset sea would be more like an adventure movie or something. Like it could it could it could be like set, you know, like two hundred years after the events of a song of ice and fire and somebody could be sailing across the sunset sea and come across another continent and there crazy crap going on over I don't know I'm just I'm talking out of my butt right now so <laughs> I think that I think anything could be interesting depending if George R. Martin wrote it I'm sure it would be interesting do dragons prevent progress I think in a way you could say that you know it would be like the, would the world be a better place without dragons I mean potentially I mean it kind they kind of were they kind of were a better place without dragons until... But then the thing is, it's not the dragon's fault, though. The The problem is always people. Like, the dragon, the dragons don't... The dragons aren't aren't naturally going to burn, burn 4,000 people alive for no reason. Like, it, it's because the people are commanding them and telling them to do this. It's not the dragon's fault. Stupid people. People have always been the problem. I feel like John coming back to life in the show wasn't even a big deal. People weren't even really impressed except Tormund. <laughs> I mean, yeah, because pretty much in the show, everybody knew he was going to come back to life. Like, uh, I mean, like, as far as the viewers, like us, we all knew it. It was like, 
why are they hamming this up, making such a big deal about it? Like, he's not going to come back. It was so obvious. They couldn't even keep it a secret. Like, Kit Harrington was was spotted so many times. Like, just in, m- mysteriously in places where they're, where they're filming the show, and it was just so public. Like, oh, everybody knew he was coming back. Freaking annoying. Why is everyone taking R plus L equals J as gospel? What if Jon Snow really is a fat yellow cat? Good question. Good question. Will the future map show the world is round and the far north of Essos meet up with the far east? I mean, I think if those things are true, then that's what the map will show. Like, after the series is done, hopefully we do get more maps, because I love maps. I love to be able to point to the place that I am reading about on a map. It, it makes the experience all the more immersive, in my opinion. Do you think we'll ever see an ice dragon? See, all these questions, all these questions. I mean, there is the potential. There is the potential. It is called A Song of Ice and Fire, and I pointed out the uh, dragon that's uh, that's on the title page of The World of Ice and Fire. There's four dragons on that page. But Ice Dragon, I mean, and then The World of Ice and Fire does say that they exist. But as for will we see one in A Song of Ice and Fire, I don't necessarily know. Like, it's so difficult, it's so difficult for me to make a definitive answer about these types of things because I don't really know what martin's gonna do it's kind of just whatever he wants to do it's like the kraken for instance like we get we got so many hints and rumors that there are krakens that are real because you know there are rumors of a kraken like taking down a ship somewhere or something but uh, do we ever see the kraken will we ever see the kraken who knows do you think we'll ever learn the origin of the Black Stone like it, like Old Town and the Iron Islands? Probably not in A Song of Ice and Fire. Probably not. Maybe if Martin writes another spinoff series and maybe there we'll get more information. But not in, not in A Song of Ice and Fire. I feel George R. Martin is more complicated. Make John the answer the, the whole series as a song, as the Song of Ice and Fire. John is not the answer. He has his part to play in the North. Hmm. I agree with that for the most part. Is there any chance that the show gets better in Season 7? To me, it seems like it will end like a train wreck of shit. I mean, look at Lost. Lost was great in like the first season. And then the second season was okay. And then everything after that was absolute garbage. And then by the end, it just made no sense. And, you know, you know people that... Ugh, I'm I'm gonna get into trouble for saying this, but people that kind of have no brains and just sit back and just go, Bleh, this is good, no matter what they're watching, thought that it was so great. Oh, the ending was so good to Lost. But, but people that actually want closure and want to understand what happened realize that this makes no fucking sense. <laughs> this makes no sense. Nothing that happened in Lost made any sense, and it just felt like a waste of time. And I don't want Game of Thrones to do that same thing. I don't want Game of Thrones to feel like a waste of time, so I hope they get it together. But will they? I don't know. Will Planetos ever have an industrial revolution or or at least a democracy? I think that'll be part of the bittersweet ending. I think that uh, the feudal system will fall and that the common people will have to step up for themselves. Like I've said that over and over and over and over again. I think that's what's going to happen. Okay, if the world is round, then the others of the north are the same as the others in the far east. The wall would be equal to the five forts. I mean, I don't know. Maybe if the land gets more narrow. Do you mean, I mean, do you mean equal in size? Or I don't know. I don't know. Or do you just mean equal in power? I'm not sure. Okay, this live stream is going to end in just a little bit. I've been streaming for over an hour now. So, if anybody has any few more questions before I go, please ask away. Last chance to ask a question. 
Do you think that Blood Riven is the Three-Eyed Crow? I'm pretty sure he is. I mean, I've seen people talking, giving different ideas about how they don't think he's the Three-Eyed Crow. I think he's the Three-Eyed Crow, definitely. I mean, it would be a twist if he wasn't. I don't deny that that wouldn't be a good twist. Varys is a merman, sure. <laughs> In the world of Ice and Fire, they have several long night legends. Do you think they're all fictional or still not true? I think they're all on some level true. Something definitely happened during the long night. Something definitely happened, and it affected the entire world. There's no way all those legends would exist if something didn't happen. Is Blood Raven even real? What do you think this is, Fight Club? <laughs> I've watched Fight Club since the last la live stream. I, I think it was mentioned in the last live stream, and I finally watched it. <laughs> People were giving me hell for not having have seen it. What magical properties would Valyrian armor have? Well, Euron's armor seems to be covered in runes, so... Maybe some sort of magical protection. Maybe he can't be seen in, you know, visions or something. I don't know. That's interesting. Maybe it blocks certain things. Like he can't be spied upon with glass candles. So that makes him more, even more, you know, dangerous. What if the entire A Song of Ice and Fire story was brand unconscious I <laughs> it was all a dream I used to read bird up magazines <laughs> I don't know I don't know I feel like George R. Martin would get a lot of shit for that he'd get a lot of shit for that in the books do you think Theon will live to the end I mean he seems to want to kill himself pretty badly in the books at this point I don't know about to the end I feel like he'll probably die sacrificing himself for somebody else's well-being because he's such a he's so full of guilt such a pathetic character and so sad to see Theon fallen so far it's crazy but he he want he he desperately wants redemption so i feel like he'll end up sacrificing himself for somebody all right guys so i'm going to put this live stream to an end it's been fun talking about some books with you guys I hope you guys enjoyed it uh, I don't live stream often so thank you guys for spending this last hour for, with me feel free to check out my Patreon account uh, and I will see you guys later in my next video peace out dudes